Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC Hobby. In this video, I am beginning the modification of the wing of the Raven 1500. Uh, this modification is to mount servos in the wing to actuate the flapperons. Um, there's a variety of ways that this can be done. Um, what I'm going to be doing is using a pair of these uh, pre-made brackets and um, I'll have to trim them down to size a little bit and I won't be using the, uh, the crossbar. I'll be uh, gluing the servo to this surface uh, with hot glue. Um, the way these normally work, there's a little plastic piece that goes across here and screws down to these two holes anchoring the servo. What I'm going to be doing is putting the servos. What I'll be doing is trimming the tops of these down level with the servo and just using the rails to anchor the servo uh, along with glue. And uh, then I'll be mounting these into the wing, uh, probably right in this position here. Now, uh, the wire is long enough uh, that if I I can't stretch it out because I'm holding the camera with one hand. Um, but uh, the wire is long enough that I can put the servo here, uh, run the servo through the wing, and have it come out right here near the center of the wing. Uh, that's going to work out perfectly. And uh, then the advantage of using these is that I'll only need to put a couple of wood rails from the um, spar to the the rear spar and anchor this to those and then just use some nice thin balsa to fill in uh, the rest of the space so that I can uh, attach covering and that'll make for the least amount of wood and assorted parts being put into the wing also if there's an issue with the servo if I need to adjust the horn I can unscrew this and remove it from the wing and do whatever I need to do and then screw it back in. So uh, another advantage is that um, it provides uh, aerodynamic um, shielding for the servo arm. There isn't a big hole in the wing and uh, in the event that I land in some tallish grass, uh, I'm not going to get grass caught up into the, uh, into the linkage. The wing modification is coming along well. After making several test fits and measurements, I realized that I was going to have to cut these brackets off altogether and just make that smooth. And I'm going to glue the servo directly onto this plate. Uh, the reason being that I want it as far forward as possible uh, so that the servo isn't pressing against the covering on the top side and thus changing the shape of the airfoil. Uh, unfortunately, even with this really thin servo, um, I am still going to have to mount this plastic piece at the surface. I'm not going to be able to uh, sink it in. Um, it's only about a millimeter thick and I've shaved leading edge a little bit uh, to make it more aerodynamic. Um, basically it's just going to screw on here and I'll need to put a small piece of uh, wood under here just to have something for covering to attach to and uh, covering can attach to uh, this section as well. Um, and this little uh, area here needs to be just notched a little bit uh, so that the control arm can rotate as far as possible. Uh, this is going to work out really well, I think, and um, 
there's only a teeny bit of aerodynamic interference from this edge. Uh, considering how much I took off of the wing tips, I don't think this is a problem, especially since it's on the bottom side of the wing. Uh, so, um, and it's only about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter wide. Uh, so that is basically what it's going to look like on top. And the servo will mount under here with the control horn attached. Now I'm going to have to cut this control horn down to size a little bit. I'll probably have to knock off the upper two holes and uh, use the second from the bottom. I may be able to get away with the third. I'm going to make it as long as possible so that I can get the maximum amount of throw because uh, ideally I'd like to be able to pull the flap almost to a 90 degree like this. And uh, so that's how it's proceeding. Um, I need to glue this in and put in that little piece of uh, wood there. Um, I'm going to do some test fitting first. Uh, the next step, I'm going to uh, glue the servo in place and uh, measure out the uh, control horn to see how long I can have that. And, uh, and then I'll uh, make the two holes here to screw this down. And once I've got those in place, I'll uh, put this into its final position. Right now, it's just slid down in between the wood there. Um, cut it a teeny bit large and then uh, sanded it to fit. Uh, the best way to go so there's a little bit of tension there. Um, so that's going to be nice and solid uh, once that is CA'd in place. I might put a couple of little triangle gussets here and here. Uh, but since I'm going to be putting a piece here uh, for covering purposes, I may not uh, do that. I may just put one triangle gusset here uh, to kind of provide a counter to the piece of wood that's going to be in between here. Uh, so that should uh, brace it up well and uh, keep everything in place. So I'm adding very little weight here. Um, I've taken out the uh, two servos. I probably should get a, a weight on those versus this servo. I, I would bet this servo is heavier. Um, this is all metal gears and ball bearing. So even though it's very, very small, it's a very precise servo and it's very fast. Um, the only wood that I'm adding is this piece of wood here, uh, which is a hard wood like spruce. I'm not sure exactly what it is. It just came out of my uh, scrap wood pile. And the piece that's going to go in here is probably going to be um, either balsa. And because it's so thin and it may actually have some structural value, I may use uh, thin plywood, uh, like this one millimeter thick plywood. Cut a piece for there. So that's, that's all the weight that's being added. Uh, and then, of course, this little plastic cover, which is... Uh, extremely light. It, I think it might be nylon. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please click like and please subscribe to my channel.